Last year, I released a black buttercream. Now, black is one of the most difficult colors to achieve in frosting. I was able to get a deep black using only black cocoa powder with no additional food coloring. And so it's been a whole year. I've talked to tons of bakers. I've seen all of the beautiful cakes that you sent me, but I've also helped troubleshoot, which is awesome for me because it helps me identify where potential issues are. So you all have inspired me to make this a better recipe. So I'm gonna try to teach you everything I know in this video. We'll go over three different methods to make this buttercream, as well as substitutions and potential pitfalls. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to make a super black buttercream that tastes like Oreos and smooths beautifully on the outside of cakes. Because it doesn't use any food coloring, it doesn't stain your mouth, it is kind of like eating a stack of Oreos. Now, no matter which of the methods that I describe in this video that you choose, the ingredients will be the same. And the amounts will always be listed on my blog as it's much easier to update things over there. So for this one, you will need room temperature heavy cream, boiling hot water, black cocoa, Dutch processed cocoa, milk powder, vanilla extract, unsalted butter, powdered sugar divided into two bowls, cream of tartar, and salt. First, let's cover two important ingredients really quickly. And the first is the type of cocoa powder. We have to use black cocoa powder, which is an alkalized form of natural cocoa powder. And a question I often get asked in regards to this frosting is does the brand of cocoa powder matter? So what I've done is tested four brands here, all of varying colors so you can see the resulting frosting color with my method. A small note, I do use a bit of Dutch processed cocoa in my frosting recipe. So no matter which one you choose, there will be some warm brown undertones, but generally you do wanna to try to seek out the darkest cocoa that you can. However, for frosting cakes, there is usually a thick enough layer such that you could really choose even the lightest of these powders and still have a beautiful deep brown black. And the next ingredient I want to cover is milk powder. Notice how I didn't specify what kind, yet I have three different types sitting right here in front of me. And that's because in my sweet cream frosting video, I got tons of questions and comments about whether you can substitute one for another. So let me see if I can help with that. My sweet cream buttercream was an evolution of my sugarology method to bypass the sugar cooking stage by mixing a high ratio of liquid with powdered sugar while simultaneously emulsifying it into the butter. And I was able to mix up to two and a half times the amount of liquid than butter in my frosting recipe, which which gave it a super light texture unlike anything else I've tasted. And the way that I did that was by using sweet cream buttermilk powder, which has a high proportion of emulsifying fats called phospholipids. They act like a glue to hold water and fat-based ingredients together in a stable way. Now, Many of you requested non-fat or skim milk powder. This does not contain any phospholipids, so essentially less glue and therefore is incapable of holding as much liquid. And just in general, milk does have another emulsifier in the form of milk proteins, which the skim milk powder has, but they do not work in this type of emulsion. Buttercream is what's called a water in oil emulsion. So in water and oil emulsions, proteins are largely ineffective for emulsification purposes. However, they can help stabilize emulsions in a different way, and that's by bulking up the water in the buttercream, which I had suspected a while ago, but upon reading seems to be correct. So awesome, we have proteins to bulk up the water to help stabilize, but we're still missing the emulsifying phospholipids. And I'll explain where we're getting those in a second when we make the black cocoa syrup. First, I wanna show you the results of my experiment where I tested the three types of milk powder. Here is the skim or non-fat milk powder and it had this wonderful silky smooth texture. Now if you can get your hands on some whole milk powder, that one has a bit more body to it because of the extra fat. And my favorite is the sweet cream buttermilk powder because it has this special thickness to it. You're gonna see when you mix it up, it thickens up really quickly. And of course it has that ice cream flavor that I love. But I have calibrated this recipe so that you can successfully use any of these. So feel free to use what you have access to. All right, let's get started. Now, no matter what method you choose, this syrup method you'll see is going to be identical. And I'm going to be using the Cocoa Trader brand for all these method demonstrations, as well as non-fat milk powder. So to a large measuring cup, I'm going to add my room temperature heavy cream and boiling hot water. In my previous recipes, I used just milk, which is around 4% fat. Using heavy cream increases the fat, giving us more of those phospholipids. Remember, we needed those. And I use hot water because 
that helps disintegrate the fat globules, which releases the phospholipids and helps with the emulsification. Then I'll add both my cocoa powders. Using Dutch process in addition to the black cocoa adds a depth of chocolate flavor to this frosting than if you were to use the black alone. And the starches in the cocoa powders will also start to gelatinize a bit, and that in addition with the non-fat milk powder, which I'll add next, helps stabilize the water portion of this buttercream. And now I have to cool the syrup because it can't be hot at all when I add it to the butter because it will melt. So what I like to do is put it in a water bath. This takes about 15 minutes and I whisk every now and then. And what you're looking for is a black syrup that feels cool to the touch. If you want, you can also put this in the fridge, but once it's finally cool, you're gonna add the vanilla extract in. Okay, for the first method, we're gonna use both the stand mixer and the immersion blender. And the pros for this method is that you can make large amounts of frosting at once, so you're really only limited by the size of your mixing bowl. And the cons are that because you're using multiple pieces of equipment, there's a little bit more to clean up. But the result is a medium firm emulsion with a nice smooth and glossy finish. First, I'm going to take my slightly softened butter and whisk it on high speed for about three minutes. Once it's nice and smooth, I'm going to add the cooled black cocoa syrup in at least three additions. The first addition is going to be small and it's just to loosen up the butter. I'm gonna eyeball it and just add a splash and then whisk the butter until it takes in all of the syrup and is a light gray color. Then I'll add the second portion and here it's good to use a measuring cup because you can use the markings to gauge and I'll add about half of what's left. I'll mix on low speed so it doesn't splash everywhere and then increase the speed and mix until all of the black syrup has been incorporated into the butter. I'll add the final half of the black syrup, mix until it's a gray color and smooth and then mix again on high speed for one full minute and at this point check to see that your buttercream looks like mine you don't want to see any bits of butter or streaks of black you want it to be a gray color throughout that is nice and smooth now it's time to add the sugar and I've labeled them in the recipe as powdered sugar number one and number two. So I'm going to add half of powdered sugar number one until the sugar has been incorporated and then the second half as well as the salt and cream of tartar. And then you're gonna mix on high speed for one full minute. Now you're gonna wanna give the frosting a taste. I like to add a little bit more sugar and that's where powdered sugar number two comes in. You can add up to this full amount or as little as you like. And I'm gonna add the full amount so that you can see the consistency. At this point, the buttercream should be a dark gray or even a soft black, and this may be the color that you want, but if you're looking for a super glossy jet black buttercream, you'll need to pull out the immersion blender. This homogenizes the black syrup throughout the white butter fat more evenly while slightly reducing air content and results in a glossy buttercream. And it does this via the blades, both physically by shearing the fat into smaller pieces, but also with heat caused by the immersion blender. Okay, the second method is my favorite, and that's to use a food processor. Think about it like this. Using a stand mixer for frosting is kind of like driving a minivan. It's got great capacity, and it's super efficient. When using a food processor, it's like driving a Porsche 911 Turbo S. Super fast, but not as much capacity. And although it might seem a little bit intimidating, I'm gonna teach you how to drive it. And that's because it creates the firmest and tightest buttercream emulsions and the result is super smooth and glossy. The cons are that cleaning a food processor is never gonna be fun and ultimately you're gonna be limited by the size of your processor. This is my food processor and these things kind of function in an all or nothing mode. So we have the on button which runs continuously or the pulse button which allows the blade to run so long as the button is being pushed. And if this method is new to you, I only want you to use the pulse button. This bowl has a capacity of 11 cups and you don't want to exceed more than half the capacity of yours. So the amount of frosting I'm making today is four and a half cups. First, I'm going to add my slightly softened butter to the bowl and pulse until it's somewhat mixed. And it's okay to have a few chunks when you're starting out because it's hard to get them all mixed in. And now I'm going to add a splash of the cooled black cocoa syrup and pulse until it's been all incorporated into the butter. This is gonna pull the butter down from the sides and kind of turn it a light gray. You may need to pulse a few times and open the top to check and look, and then you're gonna scrape down the bowl with the spatula. 
Next, use the markings on your measuring cup and add half of the cooled black cocoa syrup to the butter. And you're gonna push the pulse button off and on and then continuously mix until it's all been incorporated. So let me show you how I know the syrup has been emulsified. Right, I've kind of cleared the sides so that you can see. So I'm gonna put the top on. And now, sometimes with the food processor, you can kind of hear when things smooth out. So I'm gonna continue to pulse and then I'm gonna hold the pulse button down to run the blade continuously. And what you'll hear is kind of the frosting like moving around in a big clump, and then you'll hear it go down and sound and everything will sound really smooth. So you see that big mass moving around in there? Okay, I'm gonna hold it down now. So you should stop immediately right when it does that. Did you see that when the mass kind of dissipated and everything kind of mixed together? That's when you stop. Okay, now you're gonna scrape down the bowl and add the second half of the black cocoa syrup and do the same thing. Scrape down the bowl and your frosting should look like this. Now it's time to add half of powdered sugar one, pulse that until everything looks nice and smooth, then add the second half of powdered sugar along with the cream of tartar and salt. You're gonna pulse that and then hold the button down continuously just until it emulsifies. Then you're gonna taste it, see if you want to, and add the second amount of powdered sugar. You can add the whole thing if you want, all of powdered sugar number two, pulse, and mix continuously until it's nice and smooth. At the end, you should have the glossiest, most beautiful, smooth black buttercream. This goes by super quick. If I have my black cocoa syrup already made and my powdered sugar measured out, I can have a super smooth, beautiful black frosting made in the food processor in probably three to five minutes tops. And the third method is to use a hand mixer. So if the food processor was like driving a Porsche, using a hand mixer is like riding a bicycle. You'll get there eventually, it's just gonna take you a little bit of time and effort. So the pros of this method is that no fancy equipment really, and you can do large amounts of frosting if you want. The cons are obviously it's gonna take a little bit longer, and it does create a slightly looser emulsion, but I'll show you how to get around that with a couple tips. I'm gonna pair this with the microwave method, and that's something that I covered a couple years ago, and is also a way to intensify color in buttercream. Okay, and I'm just gonna cover this really quickly because this method is nearly identical to the stand mixer method. It just takes a lot longer. So I'm gonna cream the butter and then add the black cocoa syrup in three parts and then the powdered sugar in two along with the cream of tartar and salt. Now because the hand mixer is not as powerful as the previous two methods, it's not able to homogenize the emulsion as thoroughly. It does work, albeit the final emulsion is a tad loose. Now this is with non-fat milk powder and if you were to do this with sweet cream buttermilk powder, that would likely help give you a tighter and firmer emulsion. And what about the microwave method for intensifying colors? You can use a bunch of ways to heat buttercream and I usually like to use a blowtorch on a metal bowl, but you can also melt a bit in a bowl and use the microwave. You take a small amount, melt it for about five to eight seconds and then stir that back in. And you can do this repeatedly until you like the color. This works because via heat, you are destroying the buttercream emulsion somewhat. As the butterfat melts, or in science speak, loses its crystal structure, it liquefies and butterfat becomes transparent. Think about when you're melting butter on a stovetop. This allows the black syrup to not only disperse more evenly, but the color of the liquefied buttercream be becomes more intense. Adding it back into the solid room temperature buttercream spreads this color throughout, melting a little bit along the way and slowly darkens everything. The pitfall of this is that 
you can overmelt an emulsion-based buttercream past the point of no return. When you do that, the buttercream will look greasy and will have a soft texture, even if you chill it or whip it. It's the reason why you can't make a stable buttercream just out of browned butter. And for this buttercream, it's going to take a bit of melting to get a nice solid black. You're just not gonna get the same gloss as you would with a blending method. So if you can, try to use either the immersion blender or food processor if you're looking for a smooth and glossy result. As for things that could potentially go wrong, and I've seen this only with these types of sugarology frostings, if you happen to accidentally add all of the powdered sugar at once or all of the syrup at once, you will shift the buttercream emulsion out of balance. And you'll know you've done this when the frosting turns into a very thick liquid, even when it's cold or at room temperature. And what I'm about to show you goes against everything you've learned about buttercreams probably, which is to whip it right? Mix it on high speed and it'll eventually come together. That is the opposite of what you want to do. Take a spatula or a whisk and very slowly, and I mean painstakingly slow, stir the buttercream. You'll soon see these little white dots. Those are what's called butterfat grains. Keep stirring until they're the size of like bread yeast, you know, the instant yeast that you use to make cinnamon rolls and stuff, and it'll all be kind of coated in this thick black liquid. Now increase the speed of your stirring very slightly and then keep increasing it until the very end. You're going to stir a little bit quicker and you'll get your buttercream back. And now it's going to be gray because it was mixed manually. And the black syrup is, is really unevenly distributed throughout the butter fat, but now it's ready to go back into your food processor or stand mixer, or you can use the immersion blender to homogenize it. And then you're going to mix it on high speed and proceed with the recipe. So how does this frosting perform on large cakes. It's amazing to work with. For this cake, I made the frosting using Cocoa Trader Black Cocoa non-fat milk powder and my favorite food processor method, which by the way, came about sort of by accident. I often visit my parents during the summer who live on the other coast and wanted to make my black frosting. And I was, I was searching for any kind of blender, but my mother is Thai and she makes her own chili powders and paste. So any kind of food that you put into her blending equipment usually comes out with a high enough Scoville rating that it'll make you cry. It's very, very spicy. All except for my dad's Nutribullet. So I made frosting using a bullet blender, which I don't recommend because it was kind of a pain, but the texture and the speed with which it made frosting was very intriguing to me. And I knew at that instant that when I came back into my own kitchen, I was gonna start experimenting with my food processor. The cake is a black cocoa chiffon, which ended up being a little fudgy for a chiffon, but still amazingly light, if that makes sense. I then filled it with my quick American cream cheese frosting and covered the outside with the black buttercream, which smooths like a dream after coming out of the food processor. No air bubbles and just the creamiest and glossiest finish. And it wouldn't make sense to use food coloring for the black drip, so I came up with a black chocolate salted caramel sauce to decorate the exterior along with some blackberries. So hopefully you've learned enough to make this frosting. I'm super proud of it. Um, it took me a really long time to develop. Well, I wanted to say thank you to all of you. Thank you for sending me pictures of your cakes and for you know chatting with me. Um, just to give you an idea of what it takes to develop a frosting, this is only a fraction of what I have. And so I want to say thank you for you know supporting me here. Thank you for supporting me in other places. I see you and you know, this is a labor of love and I'm grateful that you allow me to do this. So I hope you enjoy our black frosting and happy baking.